Um, so wonderful to join you all. Thank you so much to NAS Legacy Foundation and Rising Girl. And uh, I've decided to stand for the Zoom. Normally I'm kind of sitting down doing the Zoom and I've decided to stand because I thought that would give me more energy and I can use my hands. You know, I'm a kind of handsy person. Um, this uh, social distancing affects me a lot actually because I'm actually quite uh, a hugger. But anyway, break the glass. What does it mean and how do we do it? So I thought I'd start very quickly and talk about me growing up and the kind of child that I was. I remember my first um, incident, if you like, at school was probably when I was around the age of seven years old. And I remember going into school and um, they'd said, what did you do in your summer holidays? And I remember saying, well, my parents took me to Jamaica and I saw cockroaches that flew. And the teacher looked at me and she said, cockroaches don't fly. And I was like, yes, they do. I, I saw it fly, it scared me. Um, so I know that they fly. Um, she called me a liar. She told me that I needed to correct my story and that I needed to sit down. Anyway, I was really quite angry about this and I, and I couldn't get, I was seven years old, I couldn't argue with this teacher. So anyway, in the end, I ran out of school. I climbed over the wall. I ran home, which was just across the road from school. And I got my dad who came to the school, who I don't know what words he had with the teacher, but needless to say, the teacher never called me a liar again. And that was probably my first lesson in understanding that when you know something to be true, do not let anybody tell you that it's not. When you know you've seen it with your own eyes, when you know you have felt it, don't let anybody tell you that it isn't true and that's not your feelings. And that's often that we have to contend with, especially when you're um, a person of color. You always, people are always trying to judge what you said, second guess what you said. Well, don't let them do that. Know that you are who you are. You are beautiful in yourself and you are enough. And people will come for you when, only because you are somebody special. If you weren't special, people wouldn't always try to bring you down or knock you down. They're trying to knock you down because you are special. So know that you're special and know that you are gifted. My parents taught me um, resilience and I didn't realize they were teaching me resilience at the time. And let me tell you what I mean by resilience. Um, my mum and dad went through a lot of racism when they came to this country. They were obviously called names. They were turned away from places where they went to rent. Um, actually, my dad came first to try and build a home for my mum to come. But actually, it was a lot harder than he thought because he couldn't get anywhere to stay. And they faced a lot of discrimination. Um, the doctor actually tried to kill my brother, as my dad tells me, because they gave him some wrong medicine and they had to rush to the hospital. So they went through an awful lot. But at no time did they really um, show any bitterness in the stories they would tell me. In fact, my mum used to say, sticks and stones may break your bones, but names will never hurt you. And she used to tell me this over and over again, and it almost used to be like a song. I would go to school, skip in, sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. But then people would call me names at school and I would fight because actually the names did hurt and I wasn't going to let anybody call me names. So I didn't quite understand why you kept telling me that sticks and stones would break my bones, that names would never hurt me when names did hurt. And actually, as we've gone forward now, we learn more about mental health. We understand that names and words are very, very powerful. And actually, they can evoke your action and, and they do have an outcome. But what they were saying to me is, even though names will hurt, remember you can deal with it. So that's really what they were teaching me, a kind of resilience to that. Because 
they had to survive what they went through in order for me to get to where I am. And that's why I always look back on the people that have gone before me and I have an awful lot of respect for those people that have gone before me. And um, when my um, dad came home one day and um, I'd come back from school and my dad was tired because he worked during the day and he was a musician and he gigged during the night. And he came home and he said, where's your brother? And I said, I don't know where my brother is. He hasn't come home from school. And my dad ran out of the house um, as quick as you can imagine. And um, I didn't know where he was going. But basically, my dad had passed a group of kids all huddled around something. And my dad instinctively knew if my brother wasn't home, my brother was getting beaten up by this group of kids. And he went. And he obviously um, interacted, saved my brother from a beating. I don't know what happened. All I know is that when they returned from the hospital, my brother was quite badly beaten up. Instead of my dad telling me about this racist incident of, that happened to my brother, he said to me, whenever you see somebody in trouble, whenever you may witness something, no matter how tired you are, never walk on the other side of the road. And so he was teaching me every single incident that happened, every single racist incident that happened, my father was giving me a lesson, a life lesson in what to do in the resilience of it. My brothers, on the other hand, and I had three older brothers and a younger brother, they taught me resistance. They kind of, you know, they kind of like had enough of that turning the other cheek and they were just ready for the resistance, for the movement. So my brothers taught me resistance. And they would say things to me like, if I'm driving my car and there's a police driving past, look in my mirror to see if the, car to, the police car turns around to follow me. And if it does, I must stop somewhere public. They taught me lots of little things on how to resist the negativity that follows of being a black woman. Um, and I remember them saying to me, if I'm ever in trouble, don't call the police, call them, because they are the people that will help me. They're my family. And that also taught me about an armor of resistance. And I think that as you go through your life, you need to have that resilience and resistance in your life. And if you haven't got big brothers like I have, ensure that you have friends who will help build that armor around you and that resistance around you because you will need that to fall back on if you ever break a ceiling or door down or a barrier because it's exhausting fighting discrimination is totally exhausting it can sap every life energy out of you and the way to cope with that is to make sure you've got a charging point and that charging point are the positive people around you that charging point can be the NAS Foundation or Rising Girls. That can be your charging point, but make sure you have a charging point. Also make sure you take time out for yourself, that you learn how to take a deep breath when situations are getting to you. It's important to give yourself time. Make sure you protect yourself and your brand as you are as a person so that nobody can tell you anything about you. I mean, I am my own worst critique. So if I do a speech, if I write an article, I will critique myself more than anybody else. And so, I, you know, anybody can say anything to me. I know whether I've done a good job or a bad job because I have critiqued myself. And that's also a way to be honest and to protect yourself. Another thing as well, the practical thing about protecting yourself, and especially for the younger generation now, be careful what you put online because it's there forever. Be careful who you trust because it's there forever. Don't let anybody have control over your property of who you are, over your body, over your words. Make sure you protect that first because if you protect you, then nobody else can then come in and, and attack that. So protect who you are. Don't send pictures that you don't want out there in the public domain, no matter who that person is, because at the end of the day, you need to protect who you are. And I know I'm uh, running out of time. So um, let me just, 
a few more nuggets. Um, don't dim your light. So there'll be times when you've got a great idea, you're very enthusiastic about something, and then you think, oh, I better not say that, or I better be careful, or such and such. Like, don't dim your light. Because dimming your light serves no purpose at all. It might help others, but ultimately it serves no purpose. So don't dim your light. Uh, you can shine and you can let others shine too. There's enough darkness in the world for us all to shine. So don't ever think that um, you need to dim your light. And I want to kind of, um, I want to kind of end on uh, some words from uh, Maya Angelou, who's one of my favorite poets. And um, she says this, she says, uh, pretty women, oh, this is my adaptation of her poem, by the way. So she says, pretty women wonder where my secret lies. I'm not built to a size 10 or supermodel size, but when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say, it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the curl of my lips. I am a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman and me. I walk into a room just as cool as you please, and many try to cut me down to my knees. They can't touch my inner mystery. I say, it's the fire in my eyes and the flash of my teeth, the swing in my waist and the joy in my feet. I am a phenomenal woman, phenomenal women and me. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about or have to talk real loud. But when you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say, it's in the click of my heels, the kink of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need for my care. Cause I am phenomenal woman, phenomenal women and me. Thank you very much. <laughs>